of university career. Then the admission process. Once again, I I'm, I just deal with the part which is on my my own uh, my own side. So of course you will apply and you will submit an application, including your NTS diploma, maybe an MS if you have uh, also attended an, another MS course. You, your transcript of records, your curriculum vitae to show if you have also had uh, job experiences before before uh, applying to this MS, uh, and also the recommendation letters from your former maybe university professors, which are also well evaluated. All of this material is evaluated by the admission committee with a particular glance on your GPA marks, which is the final or the partial GPA, depending if you got your degree or not. And maybe also about the marks in individual exams, especially in those subjects I've said before, so in hydraulics, hydrology, and environmental engineering, because we need a basic knowledge of those. We will also check it because most of the people who is partially admitted undergoes also an oral interview where we will discuss a bit about your experience and pose to you some questions, some more questions. Once again, in hydrology, hydraulics, hydrology, and environmental engineering. So the students who are here can, can, can confirm that actually this is a, a core business of our MS. So we are interested in having people who know those subjects pretty well. I think, uh, yeah, just one, one more word about the, the, the knowledge in English in Italian. As we said, English at a level which is no lower than B2, but of course, if you have passed an English language to access the university, or if you have attended a BS in English, or if you have already passed an exam during your career, which is equivalent to three credits, you don't have to submit any, any language certificate for the admission. Italian, of course, is not required because it is welcome at a B2 level, but it is not required. I know that some people who have applied to this course have already a background in Italian, and that's good. But if uh, you can attend, of course, all the courses in English, we offer a course which is compulsory for uh, foreign students in Italian, of three credits in Italian, because that is useful for you, because at the end, if you want, for instance, to look for a job in Italy, then knowing also some Italian, a part of English, is a, a good additional option. So that's a possibility. It will be easier for, it will be, it will be yeah. easier for you to find out and to, also to interact with colleagues if you're yeah. finding a so job in Italy. For that, also for of course, it's, of course it's useful also for the evenings in Pavia, which I will not speak about, yes. but they will speak about <laughs> the evenings in Pavia. Okay. And that's all on my side. Um, Okay, I think we're now going over to the students. Yeah. Uh, thank you, so, Professor. Let's let's speak a bit about uh, about the way students we are here. So first of all, you you want to introduce a bit yourselves and say why you have chosen the rich course. The rich course. You want to start first? Or Maybe first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like first. yeah. So <laughs> hi again, everyone. I'm Hezer and Casal, but you could just call me Hez. I'm from Philippines. My bachelor's was in agricultural and biosystems engineering. So I was an agricultural and biosystems engineer in the Philippines. So anyways, why did I choose REACH? Um, the short answer would be, I felt like I needed a break from working and I felt like I needed to learn more. But the longer answer for that would be, um, it's twofold, uh, personally and professionally. So personally, um, my parents are farmers. So I come, my home province from the Philippines is an agricultural area. And if you know Philippines, it's an archipelago. So the geographic location is that we get at least 15 cyclones per year. And since um, my farmers, my parents are farmers, we would always like suffer those typhoons. And I've noticed as I was growing up that those typhoons have been, uh, the intensity and the frequency of the typhoons have been increasing. So um, while I was working, I wanted, I said, I made up, not I made up my mind, but, um, I had the interest to go to through a path of uh, that is related to climate change so that I could at least help um, not only my parents or farmers, but also other farmers in the country. Um, but professionally as well, I worked in the Department of Agriculture in the Philippines. And one of the things I've noticed is that there's not much attraction right now towards climate change in agricultural production. And working there, I've noticed how it it's impacting our agricultural production 
in the Philippines. So I also wanted to help uh, building an agricultural production system in the Philippines that is climate resilient. So when I was going through different universities and other programs that I could take, um, this easily caught my attention because um, it's very uh, the curriculum and the courses that make our the this MS curriculum is very interesting. So I wanted to apply right away. That's for me. <laughs> Thank you. And Ali Reza. Thank you so much. Hello again. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ali Reza. Uh, I have a, a background in civil and environmental engineering in University of Tehran, uh, capital of Iran, and uh, also. Uh, because of the these days and uh, nowadays, uh, the effect of the nature and climate change by the uh, humans is more and more, and not only because of the climate change. Uh, because uh, I found uh, the study plan very interesting, and it's so uh, it's uh, um, to uh, to my mind it's so interesting because of the flexibility of the course. Uh, it is. Uh, involved in the course uh, in uh, not only the climate change it's uh, it depends the geology it depends to uh, your background of the groundwater and also to uh, dynamic of the atmosphere it's like a hydrology cycle and i found it it's so uh, very interesting uh, and because of that uh, i have chosen this university thank you uh yes and then how is it going after one year? Did we satisfy your expectations or not? <laughs> yeah, so of course, for sure. Um, the experience for me has been nothing short of wonderful so far. Um, the program is equally challenging, but also fulfilling. Um, uh, as I've been going through our courses, because we're already in second semester, so I've already, we've already had uh, five courses last semester and we're taking five more this semester. And what I've noticed, with which is like the common denominator, denominator with our courses is that um, it highlights the interconnectedness of uh, not only of climate because before I went here I thought we'll just uh, learn uh, unilaterally, unilaterally just about climate but I was while we're learning here I noticed that and the professors or through the courses we've learned that uh, climate is also connected to groundwater and surface systems and also other systems in the geosphere. So I really appreciate that because um, I get to appreciate climate not only as a niche uh, concept, but something that is connected to other systems in the environment as well. Um, but secondly, I think what made experience better for me um, is the our professors as well. Our professors were really are really very understanding um, beyond um, making sure that the making sure of the welfare of the students, they would always make sure that inside the classroom we really understand the lessons. But beyond that as well, um, it's not just about grades, and they really want to instill to us the basic concepts that we need to learn in order to create climate resilience. And I really appreciate that a lot. Thank yeah. you on behalf of my colleagues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ali, what are uh, Ali Reza? What are the things you prefer about me? So, uh, I said, uh, as you heard uh, uh, about uh, the study plan and about uh, the video at, at first, it's show, uh, uh, you maybe know the Alexander Volta, as you guys also, it's famous because of the uh, Alexander Volta for me, and also I think it's for uh, other students. And uh, we have an, an international community here I have many friends from uh, all the Africa, Asia, and also in Europe, and also in uh, America. And uh, I um, I found it very wondering and uh, so on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And yes, what do you like about about the, the town of Alessandro Volta? So what do you like about Pavia? Do you like being in this small but interesting town in just Pavia? Yeah. Uh so when I first got here in Pavia, um, I immediately fell in love with the city and I'm not even kidding. Um, that's really how I felt when I got here. But to go with the specifics, I would say that the first thing that I've noticed is uh, the calmness of the uh, the calm, calmness of Pavia. So if there are Gen Z here, the vernacular that we use is a very chill vibe. So uh, there, you would see people just drinking coffee around during lunchtime or all throughout the day or just strolling around the city. 
So I really like that it's not very fast paced. It's just very, it's like everyone is just enjoying life here. And uh, I really appreciate that. So the second thing is there are many green spaces throughout the city as well. So there are many parks. We also have the Castello or the Castle. We also have the river. So whenever you just want to be in nature or just uh, have like some, some time to rest or to unwind, there are many green spaces here if you're into green spaces. So yeah, that's also great about Pavia. And lastly, I would also say that there's a strong sense of community in Pavia because unlike other like large cities in Italy, um, Pavia is uh, re relatively small. So the sense of community here is very good. So whenever you would, uh, you would see people in bars or in restaurants, just talking to each other, like their families, even if they're not. So like everyone's just very friendly. And if there's not something you don't know about or you have questions about like even the small things, it would be easy to just ask around because everyone's just very friendly. So yeah, that's what I noticed about Pamiya. Yeah, the students' life in Pamiya yeah. are cool, definitely. But, uh, and Alireza, apart from the bars and the open air, what do you like about the <laughs> University of Pavia? <laughs> so, uh, University of Pavia uh, has many dormitory, uh, has many scholarships, and uh, also you can find very well uh, every student, a professor, or the family with each other. And you can find, and uh, as uh, has said, uh, you can uh, find it a very uh, very friendly and uh, you can uh, connect with the professors and students in one uh, lovely platform uh, hero it's called that and uh, sharing the files and uh, videos also uh, something uh, in this platform yes yeah then the number of students too is quite uh, yeah, a lot. quite a lot yeah. Yeah, you know what says but uh, the classes are not so big oh, yeah. so there is a good uh, I mean, Interaction, interaction especially in these uh, days because of the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, oh, of course. But we are, we are, we are coming out of it finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, did you find that you feel any different from when you, you left home? So, how do you, you feel changed uh, after being here? Uh, yeah, so uh, I've already been here. Almost yeah. one year. Yeah, yeah, almost <laughs> one year, uh, around seven months. And I would say just in within that seven months, I would say I've grown a lot. Um, because when I got here, obviously, like you have, I had to navigate all the bureaucratic and also like the cultural adjustments that I had to do. And once I was able to acclimate, there's something fulfilling about that. And so I would say, like just going through that process, I really learned a lot. But second, but secondly, uh, in terms of the professional aspect as well, I would say that because my bachelor's was about agricultural, biosystems engineering, and now environmental engineering, it's more of like the uh, coverage is broader. So I would say like professionally, I've grown a lot as well. And I really appreciate uh, all of the learnings that I've, uh, that the professors and the courses have inculcated to me so far. And I look forward more to the exciting courses that we have because uh, Professor Sibila uh, presented a while ago, the curriculum of the program and if you could see it's really exciting so i really look forward to learning more from the program and our professors okay thank you and Alireza, finally do you want uh, to tell something to all the our friends connected here who were who are who want to become students in the in, in pavia so what would you like to tell them so to be honest uh at first, uh, you need to uh, see the study plan. You can see if it's your road uh, into these courses. And uh, if you are interested in Italy, in Milan, because Pavia is also uh, near to Milan city. And uh, if you want to uh, pay uh, lower than in cost, uh, because the Pavia, uh, uh, live, living in Pavia, uh, it's uh, lower than many uh, cities in uh, more compared to many cities in north of Italy, and also you have a, a quality of life like that, like uh, other cities. Uh, you can choose it. Uh, you can uh, search in the university website for the scholarships, and uh, uh, it uh, depends uh, in um, some uh, several scholarships. It depends to your curriculum and your. Uh, statement of purpose and uh, some scholarships are uh, 
in the website you can uh, see it and uh, also uh, you can uh, find the professors in uh, some uh, websites uh, like LinkedIn uh, or uh, see the their articles in uh, uh, some uh, science direct uh, websites for a Google Scholar to be uh, in touch with them and be uh, uh, familiar with uh, their uh, aims uh, uh, and you can choose this university not only because of the uh, this curriculum because of the we are a family here and uh, enjoy the life here Thank you yeah. very much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you to both of you. Okay. Thank you. I'm so happy that <laughs> he's feeling like living in a big, big family here in Korea. Yes, it's very well. It is. It's, uh, yes. it's about okay. speciality. Of, okay, yeah. thank you very much, Professor, she. for the presentation. And uh, after the presentation and the interview with our students, I think it's my time to share more information with our students today. Yeah, they because for maybe sure. after today's uh, the presentation, also the interview, some of the students may ask, okay, I heard from the students that Pavia is a small city, but very tranquil, very chill, but let's have a look. So students may ask, well, uh, I'm very interested in this course. I want to choose Pavia, but where is Pavia? <laughs> you know, we are not so famous as New York, as uh, Tokyo. Well, actually, as you can see on the screen, Pavia is in the northern part of Italy, actually in the Lombardia, Lombardy region. So Pavia is only 30 minutes far from Milan, which means when you arrive in Milan, you can reach Pavia easily by train or by car in only 30 minutes. And always for this reason, uh, as Alirezza shared before, uh, it's very, uh, Let's say it's very comfort also to yes. live in Pavia because it's near Milan, but the living cost is much lower than Milan. Absolutely. Of course, it's also much lower than Rome and Florence. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Pavia, well, Pavia city is famous not only for its long history, not only for this excellent university, but Pavia is also famous for these excellent agricultural products. For example, here in Pavia, we have maybe Pavia is the only area where we produce the rice. And of course, here in Pavia, we can find also a very tasty wine. Uh, besides the, the agricultural products, we have a lot of amazing landscapes around Pavia and of course, a lot of heritage sites. Uh, but staying in Pavia doesn't mean that he, you will get bored during the weekend because Pavia is so near Milan, the fashion, uh, the city of fashion. Uh, Pavia is also near uh, the Cinque Terre, one of the most romantic cities in the world, Como Lake, and one of the largest lakes in Europe, Garda Lake. So during the weekend, if you want, of course, you can do a, you, you can have a very short holiday by visiting this uh, beautiful places near Pavia. Okay, let's have a look at these numbers. Well, uh, I want to mention, the, the first the number that I want to mention is uh, 1361. What's this number? Well, in 1361, University of Pavia founded, found. So let's say that the University of Pavia has a long history for over 606 years. So we are one of the oldest universities, not only in Italy, but also in Europe. Currently, there are more than 26,000 students in the campus with at least 1,500 international students. Of course, today we have also two with us uh, in the webinars. And of course, from these numbers, you can have a general idea about this university. And um, on the screen, you can see also the picture where we can find the Faculty of Engineering. So it's a very beautiful place. Okay, let's move to the tuition fee policy because as one of the most asked questions, students always ask, okay, I want to come to Pavia, but I want to know how much I need to pay for studying in Pavia. So as you can see on the screen, University of, of Pavia applies 
a very mm, particular tuition fee policy to the students to the students um in few words if you are an if you are a non-European student residing abroad who will need a study visa to enter Italy, to make the things more simple, you can choose to pay the flat rate, as you can see on your right, on the right of the, the screen. Well, this flat rate system is based on the student's citizenship, which means, for example, you can see we divided uh, all the countries in three brackets. So the, the flat rate varies from 400 euros per year to uh, 4,500 euros per year. Uh, well, of course, we you need to check in which bracket your country uh, fills in in order to find out how much you need to pay. But for the students who come from a family with quite limited financial resource, we have also another uh, tuition fee policy, uh, which means students can ask the university to recalculate the tuition fee according to their um, family's financial situation by presenting um, the, do the documentation regarding students' financial, family's financial situation. So in this way, your tuition fee might be reduced to only 156 euros per year. Anyway, uh, it's just a very general number uh, because we need to, you know, each student has a different background, has a different situation. So we can talk about this. Um, we can give you more information uh, maybe during the Q&A session. So, uh, the, I think the, another topic which students are very interested in is the scholarship, as Arireta mentioned several times before. Well, besides the tuition fee, uh, the University of Pavia offers also a very rich scholarship called EDISU scholarship. This scholarship includes a free accommodation in one of the university's dormitory, a free meal per day, a sum of money and also the tuition fee uh, waiver, which means if you are eligible for the EDISU scholarship, your tuition fee will be reduced directly to 156 euros per year. So I think this is very interesting compared to many other Italian universities because actually this scholarship has a total value for um, of up to 7,000 euros per year. It's quite a a huge amount of money for yes for our international students. Okay, of course, we are during um, the master study, students will have the possibility to make to to do an exchange with many other universities. As a professor explained before, we have the uh, exchange program with you. Woodbridge University in 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 uh, Holland. We also have. Any, we have a number of direct contacts, but yes. also, of course, we can uh, we can have all the okay. programs, so the inclusion of all these programs. Okay, so, so which means students yeah. might not need to stay here for two years. Maybe in the second year, they will have also the possibility to go to another country for from three to six months. That's as they exchange program. So it's really very interesting. It is, it is, it is. They can yes. share also experiences outside of Pavia, which is a, a good thing, and try also to have maybe. Okay. To, to take some different subjects which are not directly included in our, okay. uh, in our master that, course. That's yeah. wonderful to know. <laughs> okay, so uh, in the end, I just want to recap um, all the information in four points. Why you should choose Pavia? So the first, first point is that University, University of Pavia is one of the oldest universities in Italy and also in the world with a long history for more than 660 years. The second point is that, as uh, our students mentioned several, several times before, Pavia is a very lively and safe city near Milan, only 30 minutes by car or by train. So it's easy for you to go to Milan during the weekend just to have a look at this, this city, of fashion, city of fashion. And of course, Pavia is a city with high quality of life, 
and affordable life costs. Of course, the living cost of here in Pavia is much lower than Milan, than Rome, than Florence, Venice. Well, the third point is that the University of Pavia has a very unique university's residence system. Uh, well, here in Pavia, there are more than 20 university do uh, dormitories. So if you apply for the EDI SU scholarship, you can choose to include so the accommodation in the scholarship. So you will have the chance to stay in one of the university's dormitories during your study here in Pavia. The last point, of course, the last but not the least, Pavia is a student-sized city with an active student community and many social and cultural events. For example, as I as far as I know, we have a very yes. huge <laughs> Iranian student commu community here in Pavia. Quite a lot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, due to the time, um, I will finish my presentation here. So if you have any doubts, if you want to know more, or if you meet any difficulty during your application process, just contact us. We will help you out. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, that already gave a lot of information to all the students. Um, so hopefully uh, a lot of it is already clear. If not, this is the moment to ask your questions. I see there are already a, a lot of questions, so we're going through them. Um, for the live audience, we can answer them now. For the people that watch the recording, just to mention, you can still write your questions and we can send them through to the staff of the University of Pavia. So they can come back to you probably by email. For the live audience, let's get started with some questions. Um, question from Emina. How many technical subjects are there and what is the offer of the library? What can you say about that? Uh, well, uh, I would say how many technical subjects, uh, more or less uh, all the subjects, because I mean, it's a course in engineering, so all the subjects are mostly technical, uh, apart from maybe the part of uh, urban planning and so on, which is also technical on its side. Uh, let's say uh, not a large number of uh, strictly scientific subjects. I would say there is a course in mechanical, in, in continuum mechanics, a course in mathematics, but then all the, let's say, a course on climatology, which is also rather scientific, but most of them are applied engineering sciences. Uh, the offer of the library, we have. Uh, I don't know if you want to say something. We have a central library and a number. And there is a technical library which is based here in the Faculty of Engineering with access to a, lar a very large number of scientific publications and volumes. I don't know if you have experience of the, of the library. You can say something. Yes, they can register to uh, some one application uh, and uh, have a seat in many libraries. More than ten or fifteen libraries we have in the Pavia. Yeah, there's also libraries open even on weekends. So if you want to study during weekends, you could do that in a library because we have a library here that's open throughout the week. So that's great. Okay, great. Thank you. I see the thumbs up coming. So I think that answered the question for Emina. And otherwise, let us know. Uh, next question from Shamsul. Uh, what is the possibility of getting admitted um, with a master, in the, uh, sorry, to the master with a bachelor in textile technology? Uh, well, uh, we should examine it because maybe that textile technology is a bit uh, far from the subjects we are, we are examining here because uh, um, you basically I don't think that there is uh, a very high um, previous background in hydraulics, hydrology and environmental sciences and environmental engineering. We must check uh, your application if you want to submit your application because it may be that uh, uh, if you are really interested and, uh, and committed, uh, we may organize an interview to see, uh, to discuss a bit whether you uh, might have the, uh, the background to face all the subjects, you know, because uh, it's nice to have uh, uh, the idea of studying uh, climate change and environmental engineering in this sense, but you face in during your master course a number of uh, specialistic subjects which need a background uh, which either you have already but we cannot give you also the background you would get in a, in a BS so we need to examine it, your uh, your application before before answering the 
Okay. Thank you very much. I hope that answered that question. Otherwise, again, let us know. Um, Andrean is asking, um, I was wondering how does the accommodation uh, for international students work? Is there a university residence near the campus? So, Andrean, nice, nice, to, <laughs> nice to hear from you because I have, uh, I have already, I know that you have already applied uh, successfully, I would say. Uh, and um, well, uh, do you want to, to answer a bit about the, the accommodation for international well, students? On the one because, I, I think uh, the students can apply for the EDISU scholarship. Yeah, you can apply yeah. for the EDISU uh, scholarship mm -hmm. uh, where you can find an accommodation uh, in uh, uh, in a college, so in a, yeah. in a dormitory license. Yes. Colleges in, in Pavia are not really dorms and not really colleges, if you want to say. It's yeah, it's quite so, unique because yeah. they are they are dorms, they have rooms, but they have also a specific cultural activity inside, yes. teaching activity inside. inside. Like, yes. yes. So they are something in between dorms where you only have uh, a residence and the colleges, like say in a Cambridge or Oxford sense, which is something a yeah, bit different. Sure. So I just but, want to yeah, yeah I yeah. want to can add something to, to okay no I just want to add that uh, well the application for the university's accommodation will start from the beginning of July so you are still in time for for preparing and uh, preparing for submitting the application well is there any university's residences near the campus of course I think during the application students can choose. Uh, Collegio Borda, which yes. is just next to our engineering campus. And also Gorgi. Also, also Gorgi. Gorgi. Yeah, we have two two colleges which are just close to the to the engineering campus. One is just on the not even on the other side of the road, on the other side of the alley in the same block. And the other one is just a few uh, two blocks away, yeah, just one yes. block away, which is uh, which are the, the, the nearest ones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so, yes. That's, 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 Really, not, not even if you are on the opposite area. side of the of the town. Yeah, that's okay. true. Even if you, you if, even if you get a place assigned in another college, in another residence, no problem at all. You can arrive. You can reach the engineering campus easily by bus or by or working. And I want to add another thing that I, I didn't mention that in my presentation to all the enrolled students. The University of Pavia offers this UniPass. The bus car, the annual bus car, at the cost of only 25 euros per year, which means you pay only 25 euros per year here. You can tra travel inside the city without limitation. Well, actually, this price is yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's wonderful because in Milan, you have to pay much more. You pay, 20, as a student, 25 euros per month. In the, in, in the even land, more, even land, more. I think land, even yes. more. So Pavia is really a city. Korea, yeah. Yes, Pavia. So it is a city. I must say, it's it's wonderful for yeah. for the students to to study and to live. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's move to the to the next question. Thank you. Uh, great to hear about that. So next question from Evans. Uh, Evans is not an engineering student, and maybe that applies to other people as well that might not have an engineering background. He has a master's degree in environmental design and solid waste management. Um, does he qualify? What can you say about that? Well, Evans, uh, I must give a look to your application, but the, I would say maybe yes, because I know that you're not an engineering student, but you have dealt, I guess, with a number of subjects which are very close to environmental engineering. So maybe that uh, uh, you can qualify maybe you need uh, an integration of knowledge in hydraulics if you haven't done something in hydraulics but we can even advise you so we can examine your uh, your your application but i would say maybe yes in my opinion because uh, you are studying something which is very close to environmental engineering so i would say try Great. So, I, I... Uh, I tell our internal uh, prospective students, if you make the application, certainly you have a certain possibility to get admitted. If you don't apply, yeah, but, zero chance. Yeah, that's it. Okay. But as I, as, I told, as, I, as I told before in my presentation, uh, we said engineering and a degree in engineering, which is uh, 
not mandatory because we have examined sometimes students which have a very good preparation even if they are not engineers they can maybe struggling a bit more of course you are engineers and you know that the background is important that would mean that you would need to study a lot but you can do it if you are committed to it so i guess send, send just apply send your application and we will give not uh, we will look at it not once but yeah. twice yes yeah. and your application <laughs> intake starts from tomorrow yeah oh. the new okay. one starts from tomorrow yeah Great, thank you for letting us know. Um, I actually sent the link to the application portal in the chat, by the way, for those people. So as you uh, pointed out, Chi, uh, nicely that the it's opening tomorrow. So click on the link, you can already save it and get ready for your application then tomorrow. Um, next question. We have a question from Martin. Martin is asking, how are the job prospects? Any idea of the rate of employment after this program? Yeah, I have a rate. I have a precise idea because uh, I knew the statistics about the environmental engineering program. And basically, we have a number of employees uh, after one or three years, after one year from the from the graduation, which is uh, slightly over the ninety per, between ninety and ninety five percent, and a rate of employees after three years from the graduation, which rate which uh, almost uh, reaches the one hundred percent. Usually, and uh, I would say these are the statistics based on the past, and I would say that the present is even a bit better because we receive a number of requests from uh, consortia, from companies, and so on. Because uh, the the market, let's call it the market, the market of engineers in the civil and environmental field uh, is uh, growing quite fastly, so quite uh, at a high high pace. So. We have a number of requests for, for graduate students, so I would say that the, the prospects are very good seen from, from today. Okay, thank you. Great to hear. Thank you very much. Uh, Alaudin has a question about the possibility to, for students to manage their living costs by working part-time. What can you say about that? Well, uh, first of all, for all the international students, it's legal to work here in Italy with the permit of stay for study purpose, uh, 20, up to 20 hours per week. So it's legal. So it, of course, after the after the lecture, after the class, you can you can do a part time job. But I just want to uh, re mention this information. If you apply for the scholarship and if you can get the scholarship. With the scholarship, you can already cover a large part of your living costs. And besides the scholarship, for example, university offers also the inside campus part-time jobs. So with this opportunity, you can work up to 150 hours per year. So you, you, can, you will be um, selected by different offices for this inside campus part-time job but always this is something that sometimes i will give this is my personal suggestion to our students i know that to to, to some part-time job is it's very important for the students to cover the living cost but it's also very important to balance yourself between the study and the work maybe our students have some more um, personal experiences, experiences to share this. about the part-time job uh, how to cover the living costs yes, uh, but uh, it's uh, not related to the, our <laughs> study okay. university but yes okay uh, i teach guitar to other students oh, very <laughs> good. Nice. Good. Very good. that's nice okay. of you anyway. okay. <laughs> so, uh, and you can uh, uh, manage your work beside your study and you can handle it if you want it's easy yeah, for, yeah. yeah for me in my case i don't have a part-time job because my scholarship allowance is already sufficient for me since we've already mentioned that cost of living here is not that high so if you don't like travel every weekend like it would be sufficient so i didn't try any part-time jobs yet okay. okay but of course in the end students need to um, evaluate their situation and yeah, try to balance the start try to balance their self, their, themselves between the study and the part-time job. For what concerns the 150 hours, they can make reference to you, so to your yes, office. Of course, so yes, of course, yes, of course. Even, even when, when you are enrolled here in Tobi. Yeah. Yes, of course. Okay. Well, actually, the international students are welcomed to do this part-time job 
in our office. So we, we are also we are happy to be able to help out our students. Okay, let's move to okay. the next. Great to hear. Thank you very much. Um, next question from Ali asking about the visa. Um, are you help, able to help out with the visa? Because in a lot of countries, it's a big problem to get uh, an appointment with the Italian embassy. What can you say about that? Yes, as far as I know, we are having, we have been having this problem for years, not only with Pakistan, but also with some certain countries in the world. Anyway, our admission office uh, is, mm -hmm keeps contacting the embassies in these countries to facilitate the visa process. So don't worry about that. If you meet any um, difficulty, if you meet any issues during the visa process, just let us know. Yeah, we have, uh, I mean, we will, uh, after your, uh, after you have been admitted, we send uh, all the information also to the, the embassy and the documentation yes. Uh, yes. quite quickly. I know that uh, in particular the Islamabad embassy is the one which is the which is the slowest maybe. Very in, slow. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very slow. So I would say don't lose time when you are admitted. Yes. Uh, just uh, make the visa request uh, as soon as you yes. can because uh, I, I know that there are these problems, yes. especially yes. in Pakistan. I know that. And it's also important to let us know that we are facing that issue so we can intervene rapidly in resolving the problem with the visa office. Great. Thank you very much. Um, next question from Farad, and we're getting towards the end of the session. Last questions. Farad is asking how many seats are for this REACH program for international students? And also, how important is the interview? <laughs> It's my turn to answer. Well, mm -hmm. So how many <laughs> for international students? We have uh, yeah, 50, 50, 50, 50 places yes. up to uh, yes, yeah. 50 places for international students. So uh, there, and there are still uh, there are still uh, up to now we have admitted uh, I think uh, less than half of them. So you, I still suggest you to apply. Uh, as soon as, as, soon possible. as possible, possible, of course, because maybe that the last intake would be even too late. How important is the interview of this program? Well, uh, what do you think about that? It is important, of course, because uh, <laughs> it is the moment where, first of all, besides uh, testing your knowledge, uh, uh, we see how you are. So I remember the interviews by by Hez and Ali Reza, and they proved to be smart students, and then and. And they are up to now, but and they are proving it now. But uh, it was evident also from the interview. So in the interview, besides your knowledge, we are able to appreciate uh, uh, if you are really a smart, a smart student who is committed to what, to what the, uh, one wants to study. And that's a big part of our evaluation. So even if you don't answer correctly to all our questions, that may be that you give the right impression. So yes, the interview is. Okay, thank you. And the last question for now is uh, Leo Mella is asking, what is the possibility to be admitted if I'm a medical doctor as a background? Ah, uh, Leo Mella, this is a hard question. <laughs> mm. I guess, uh, I guess not that much because I get, but it, it depends, but I don't think you have uh, no, the basic knowledge in, in, apart from something in fluid mechanics, maybe it depends on which kind of medical doctor. Uh, once again, I will uh, I will say the same word that, uh, that she has said uh, just uh, a few right. a few minutes before. Yeah. Just try and we will examine it. I will mm -hmm. I will understand that you are committed to our program because you are here and you are interested in it. Uh, I will try to give you a specific answer, uh, maybe some advices if you want. There is also the possibility not of being admitted this year, but maybe. To, uh, to take some some extra university courses and be ready for next year. So we can we can give you an advice in this sense. Up to now, my first answer would be medical doctor. Mm, quite knows. I must examine your your, your transcript of records and decide. Just try. Yeah, just try. When you try, you have a chance. If you don't try, you have no chance. Yes, okay. So the application will start tomorrow. The the next thing yes. will start so tomorrow. Don't yeah. Wait. Too much and get ready for tomorrow. 
And there it is on the screen, just to help everyone, the contact information and the link to the website where you can apply. It opens up tomorrow, as you just heard. And um, yeah, hopefully that this session helped you in uh, any doubts you may have and get more information and that uh, some of you maybe end up applying and uh, yeah, could be fellow students, all the students that were here joining this session, maybe next year in Pavia. And those were the questions we've received so far. Um, also, just for the people that watch the recording again, you can still write your questions. Do by all means, everybody uh, answer the polls, please. That gives us useful feedback also for the admission office, just to know um, where you are in terms of your uh, interest and if you're looking to apply. Um, and uh, I have one more poll question before we finish the session. So I'm going to open that up. And that is to know how we did. There it is over my head. How do you feel the session went? I hope you enjoyed it and it was uh, meeting your expectations. Then give us a five and otherwise uh, let us know. Um, and let us know any constructive feedback if you like for a chat. And um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the session for today. No further questions I see. Um, I think well, there must be maybe one. Um, ah, there was one from the chat. I just want to take that last opportunity for Mohamed asking. Um, so just to make sure you don't need to find a professor, you can apply without connecting to professors. You mean for the reference letter? I, I, don't, I know. don't know, Mohamed, if you... Can you, can you, show, uh, can, can you show me the question? But, uh, if they yeah, are... so the question is for master apply in this program, you, do you need to find a professor? Yeah. Can you apply without connecting to professors? That's the only thing he says. I think he's typing right now. Excellent session. Oh no, we're getting feedback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, will, we will help yeah. you out with this information. I think the students intend the, maybe the reference re letter during if the, the reference letter is intended. It helps, but it is not uh, uh, strictly necessary. So if you don't have it, but you have it, your own good career is well evaluated in any case, even if you don't get a reference letter for your particular profession. Yeah. It helps. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I see already a lot of thank yous coming in from everyone as well. So great to see. Hope you enjoyed the session. And um, yeah, with that, uh, as mentioned, maybe we see each other next year in Pavia. Last words maybe over to you to wrap it up, okay. Professor. Would you like to say Yes, to yes, you? okay, <laughs> yes. Just uh, thank you very much for, for joining this, this webinar. And uh, well, I say this, your same words, Lou. So I hope to, to meet you all in Pavia next year in September. And you will uh, you will enjoy the program and you will enjoy the town and you will enjoy the university and tour about that. And I would be really glad to meet you. Yeah. Yes. And Thank the you application starts from tomorrow. Don't and wait too much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank and you. bye bye now for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.